your area, your neck of the woods, is being divided over this idea about whether the uh, the Baden Powell statue, the the founder of the Scouts, should remain up or remain remain there because the council earlier today said they were going to take it down, but for his own protection. So it's a very, very strange situation. As far as you know, what is going down? Well, it is. And thank you for inviting me on. I mean, I'm I'm a scout. I, I achieved the highest rank in scouting. It's had a huge <laughs> effect on my life, giving me confidence, yeah. along with millions of other people around the world. But to learn that his statue is being removed without public debate, following threats of vandalism, actually suggests how far, you know, forget that we're forgetting how far we've actually come. And the bigger picture here, you know, this Black Lives Matter is powerfully exposing um, how far we still need to go. But it's also holding a mirror up to our past and and asking ourselves, you know, how do we then uh, deal with that? It's It's a catalyst for a conversation that's important. But the idea that we then just go across across the country and anybody that we have disagreed with somehow you know is removed uh, we need to slow down and recognize that uh, you look at anybody in in the past you know these historical fig- figures very few of them would comply with 21st century values so i'm more than you know uh, in, encouraging to see us learn about baden powell the good things and the bad things the entire picture but throwing him in pool harbor in the mm. hope that it will somehow resolve today's challenges or make up for past wrongs, I don't think is the right approach. No, it's potential that there's going to be, or there's the potential that there's going to be a showdown, uh, because this is what the people of Paul, including many scouts who have gathered around the statue to protect it today, are saying. Yes, and this is not the right way to go through. If you think of where we're trying to go, or what we're trying to do, you know, as a society, as a nation, we haven't actually come to terms with our past. You know, we always look on the positives as victors. We take away uh, the result, the the, the, mm-hmm. the result. We don't look at the detail. And we, I'm afraid, have a very difficult, complex past to, to, to deal with. And this is what the locals are saying today, Tobias. Let's just have a little listen. His history has nothing to do with the removal of this statue. So you want it to stay? Absolutely. Yes, 100%. Bring in this I will fight you! I'm here. I will fight for him. Everyone. There's nobody against it. They want it here. It's history, isn't we, it? We've got a suggestion for the council. Part of history. They can put a structure around it to keep it safe. What's the problem with that? There's no problem with that. No problem at all. I'm so what are they going to do? Take the pyramids and Cleopatra's <laughs> needle down? The Colosseum. And the Colosseum. They were racist. So it's pretty clear what your constituents think, Tobias, but does this just add to the febrile atmosphere? Because we now have two sides. You've got the Black Lives Matter protesters who want to tear these statues down, and now you have the people opposed to that potentially sort of forming human protection rings around the statues themselves. No, it's absolutely right that we confront our past. I mean, the the people that we're talking about are who we were. But we need to learn from history. We need to see the past as a source of insight, of education, and indeed debate. And my concern with this, as I mean, you, you talked about this sort of frenzy and this febrile atmosphere, that is not the time to make measured decisions which are in the best interest of future generations, again, to understand our past as, as well. And with somebody like uh, uh, Baden-Powell, who did so much good, the reaction by the council itself brings into quest huge questions. They've read something on a website and they've ty- decided without public debate, and I now understand without the advice of the police, to go ahead and remove the statue itself. So we've created another problem when tensions are already very high. So uh, the voices you heard there, I think the absolute majority of the people, um, probably are, are not so aware of Baden Powell's past. Mm. But would absolutely recognize the importance of learning more about his past. Why did he have this connection um, with fascism? But then that turned around. He was against Hitler. He was actually labeled as a spy. He was in uh, on Hitler's what was called the Black Book. Had they succeeded in getting into the UK, um, they would have arrested a whole series of people. He would have been one of them. So he, his journey of understanding fascism 
is something that, again, needs to be understood and placed into context. Likewise, what happened uh, in Africa as well. Let Scouts learn that as well as what he did to create an incredible movement. That surely is in everybody's best interest. Well, you're so right. And context is so important because I guess there were lots of contradictions with Robert Baden-Powell. I mean, you have, for example, him expressing homophobia. However, some of his biographers have actually suggested that he may have been a closeted gay man himself. And of course, if he was, there would have been no way that he could have come out in the 1930s. Of course, he did have this very strange relationship with the Nazis, though, and it is concerning, is it not, that he wrote in his diary in 1939, lay up all day, read Mein Kampf, he called it a wonderful book with good ideas on education, health, propaganda and organisation. He was also an early admirer of Benito Mussolini. So so he was far from a perfect man. No, and, and absolutely right. And, and how much more we know about him, because you and I are talking about him. And the idea that we then dismiss all this or, or somehow gloss it, airbrush it out uh, of view, of public view, doesn't allow us to better understand not just who Baden-Powell was, but what society was as a whole. You go back further to Francis Drake, who's connected with the Armada and Queen Elizabeth. Actually, there's a completely another side to him that we need to understand. Mm. Churchill as well and what he did in, in many aspects of the war. Most people are not aware of Operation Catapult where he attacked French ships because he was worried that they were going to fall into German hands after the French had resigned uh, to the Germans and uh, the French uh, officers wouldn't give up their ships. So Churchill gave the order to attack them. There are aspects, difficult uh, and complex decisions that are made, judgments and positions, societal positions, that are very awkward for us to understand. Tobias, just quickly to interrupt, we... We, we've, we've just, because we're going to go to the government briefing in a second, but we've just got some breaking news that this statue will be given 24-hour protection, but its removal has been delayed. Do you support that decision? Well, I support the, the decision to have a proper de- debate of, uh, and discussion about it. Leave it there for the moment, uh, or leave it there permanently, until there is a proper debate and discussion through council. The idea somehow that we just pluck it out of there uh, for safekeeping means actually that the vandals are the ones that get to win here. That isn't the society I want to be part of. Couldn't agree more. That is Tobias L with the Conservative MP for Bournemouth East. And just repeating that breaking news, a statue of Baden-Powell that we have been talking about will be given 24-hour protection after plans for its temporary removal were delayed.